Yeah, second half of Big Ten play. Excited to uh, make the turn here and and keep improving. I think that's kind of been the focus of, of uh, I don't know, the last 48 hours is the amount of improvement we've made, um, particularly from the service line. I think second in the conference in aces right now in conference only stats. Doing a lot of things uh, at a higher level uh, needs to continue uh, on a tough stretch here of four road games against four very good opponents. So, um, yeah, as we mantra has been the last two weeks, uh, it's all about the day in front of us and looking forward to practicing here. I think it's just the, the the opportunity to play on the road against great teams is something that is extremely valuable to us. You know, if if we do what we're supposed to do, we get a chance to participate in the tournament. Then we know we're going to be on the road most likely in the opening weekend. So we got to get real comfortable in that environment. And so these matches have extra meaning because they're exactly what it's going to feel like. What you know when you're in the tournament. And so you, you want to have success in the appropriate environment. You know, and so yeah. Aside from the win streak, what type of growth have you seen since the start of the season? With this yeah, I, uh, I mean, we already talked about serving. I didn't think, if you told me at the end of preseason that we would be where we're at as a serving team, I would have said, wow, we're, we're, players are working hard and we're coaching well. So uh, it's foundational to us, and, and it didn't get in place as fast as we wanted it to, but it's in a good place right now, and we're going to need it down the stretch. Uh, communication, just player to player, I think is just a lot more efficient and, and, um, and urgent. Has been maybe one of the gifts of being having our back against the wall is some pretty urgent communication. We got to get things done, and then things are happening a little faster than they were earlier on, for sure. Fight or fight? A little bit, yeah. Just uh, yeah, when you when you've got no choices, I think you're really efficient. Yeah. yeah. I know you got a lot of good players, but I'm writing about Melanie, so I was hoping to talk about what she brings to the the, the, the ingredients she brings to the whole mix here. Yeah, we, we need we need more time. Uh, just, um, I mean, you saw what, what it was like without her, you know, when she's not healthy or when she's not able to play, it, things get hard for us in a hurry. So I don't know what words you want to associate with her poise, um, you know, skilled, intelligent. Um, yeah, just I think durable maybe is the word I think about most in terms of the body of work she's had in her career. Uh, just really impressive, all the things she does for us. Yeah. Tall setters, is that becoming a thing now in college volleyball? Has it always been that way, or is, there, is this rather a unique situation? Um, it's 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 there. You know, teams have had them before. Uh, it's probably the least the least memorable thing I'll remember about Mel is what I'll say. You know, I think it's 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 notable from a fan perspective, but uh, in terms of the things she's good at, she's one of the best defensive setters I've coached. You know, uh, behind the block, which. You wouldn't normally attribute that to a, a longer athlete being a great defender, and that's one thing that stands out to me about her. And so it's interesting that one of the things I think she's best at is usually hard for setters of her size. Um, but yeah, certainly gifted in a lot of ways. Yeah. Her intensity on the court versus her personality off the court. It's rather contrasting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very, very different. Um, yeah, I think off the court, just about as fun a person as you can have around, you know, and uh, you're hard pressed to stay on track with her in a story, you know, she can bounce around uh, pretty good. And then in the match, totally on task at all times, you know, so very different levels of, uh, I don't know, different kinds of focus, you know, when she's off the court, she's, she's all over the place. And when she's on the court, she's, she's on the court. Yeah. That's what I'll remember about her. I didn't mean to like dominate the same. You're crushing it. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, halfway through the Big Ten slate, what stood out to you or what's your biggest takeaway uh, having gauged the conference a little bit? Yeah, just really impressed by everyone we face, right? Just everyone seems to show up and, and give us a good fight, which probably should have expected. But um, yeah, just it's you don't look too far ahead. You don't look too far back. You really have to have a narrow focus in this conference because because things can flip on you in a hurry. You can you can win a bunch in a row and you can lose a bunch in a row. And so just I think that's been the biggest uh, learning is just how narrow your focus has to be. You mentioned the success serving yet 10 aces against Michigan State. Is that a, been a focal point or has that just kind of been organic throughout the season? No, I mean, it's been, been foundational. It was one of our, I don't know, three big focuses coming into the preseason. And when we set our focus after the preseason, it was like, this is still on our list, unfortunately. It was supposed to be off our list. We got to stay on it here. And, um, and now 10 games in, it's starting to show up the way that it needs to.
yeah. at a fourth set on Sunday. They had the lead, you know, they, they were desperate for it, and uh, they led, I think, for most of it. And then you guys, I think, had a 17-6 run to end it. What did you guys do to, to turn things around there? Yeah, we, we haven't won a lot of sets like that, which is why I think it's so important. You know, we, we've we've won a lot of sets through, through you know, getting leads early on and hanging on to them, but, but to chase somebody down is something that we know we need defensively. You can't... You can't chase someone down just by siding out and doing offense only. You have to do some things on the defensive side of the ball. And, and that's maybe what stood out to me, that, that we do have that within us, that we can chase somebody down uh, on the defensive side of the ball, which is, which is what you need for sure. To uh, hostile environments this week, do you feel like, or do you kind of go into the mindset thinking this is what the tournament's going to be like? Yeah. Again, just extremely valuable because, you know, the environment you're in matters, you know, and you, you need to do all the things we've been doing for the last four matches, but in a, in a, in a hostile environment. That's, that's the new challenge. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a little while, I think maybe since Maryland, that we've really been in, a, in a, an environment like what we're going to see from Purdue. Yeah. The uh, game being on Fox Sunday, I mean, that, that's really cool from a you know, media perspective, but is yep. that something you guys think about? You're going to have a hard time getting me past Tuesday, I think, uh, Tuesday's practice. Um, no, again, at times my, my other roles require me to look at the sport from a larger perspective, and I love where we're at. You know, just a lot of people doing a lot of work. I think last week's match uh, between Wisconsin and Nebraska was maybe the most watched match uh, in Big Ten history, over 600,000 viewers. And, and Sunday, that could be eclipsed, you know, with the lead in of an NFL game and being on Fox. Uh, what an awesome opportunity. Yeah. You follow the Vikings pack? Yeah. Go, go Vikings, yeah. <laughs> Are you a Vikings fan, Coach? I am wherever you need me to be, right? I'm in Minnesota. I'm all in. My, me and my family are all in. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Uh, what do you feel like is going right here? Four in a row. Uh, you guys uh, kind of you know, bounce back. And I had a few of your teammates talk about, you know, adversity can make or break a team. And it seems like it's uh, helping make you guys. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot in our gym about how this isn't how we want our season to go. And I think we've really just kind of like transformed it. We've transformed our mindsets. We've transformed how we're gonna, how hard we're gonna work in practice. Um, we've kind of put things into our own hands because I feel like the coaches can't really play the game for us, you know. And we really want to do it for each other. We want to do it for the coaching staff. We want to do it for everyone who supports us. And I think just changing that mindset into like we are a winning team. We have the talent to be a winning team. I think that's really showed on the court these last four matches. And obviously, we want to continue it into this weekend. You feel uh, pretty good halfway through the Big Ten. You, know, you, you feel like you guys are you know, in the spot where you kind of control your own destiny? For sure. I think even though we're not ranked, I think no one wants to see us in the Big Ten. No one's going to want to see us in the postseason just because of the amount of talent and the level we can play at. So I feel like even though we haven't reached our full potential yet, it's coming. And I think a lot of people are going to be scared to play Minnesota. What's the biggest thing you notice in your game, uh, your differences from last year as a freshman to now? Yeah, I would just say my confidence. Um, I'm ready to go out there and take a big swing in any big moment. I'm ready to make the big play and be like the kind of closer for the team that I have can. I know like my team can rely on me for that. But I think my serve-receive uh, serve game has really developed, and I think I can be a very reliable aspect in that category. So I know when my team isn't in need of a big play, I can do anything for them in any moment. How do you guys approach uh, from a mental standpoint knowing you're going to go to two uh, pretty darn tough places to play this week? Yeah, I would just say the mindset again. I mean. Obviously, last year at Purdue, we got swept on their home floor, so obviously we want to go out there and kind of have like a revenge tour um, for them. Uh, Wisconsin, the border battle is always a huge game for us, especially for me from Wisconsin. It's kind of like me being back in my home state and that rivalry that I've obviously came here to continue at Minnesota. So obviously they're two great opponents, and we're going to show up and play our best game. You got some family friends that are going to be there? Yeah, I have like 20 people coming, <laughs> so I'm super excited. What was the, uh, the uh, decision that ultimately led you to Minnesota over Wisconsin or other schools? Yeah, I would just say the feeling of home here, the feeling of um, that I was going to grow into the kind of valuable player I want to be in the future, and obviously just the coaching staffs that I've been able to play for here. I know they can help me develop into the player I want to be when I play in the pro, pro leagues, um, which is my goal in the future. So I think just the feeling of home, the campus I really liked, and the great balance of academics and athletics. So. That led me here to Minnesota. Sunday's match being on Fox, following Packers, Vikings. I mean, that, yeah. that's pretty cool for us. I don't know. Do you for guys sure. think about that? Yeah, for sure. I, we were just talking about the Wisconsin-Nebraska game about how many viewers they had. They just announced how many viewers they had on Instagram. So we were like, wow, that could be us on Sunday playing on a national television after the Packers-Vikings game, which is huge. So 
we're super excited and obviously national television we want to show who Minnesota volleyball really is. Well, you look at some of the uh, things that have happened this year Nebraska playing that outdoor game you know they had a uh, obviously well watched game with Wisconsin uh, could you ever imagine growing up playing volleyball uh, you know as a, as a youth player you know thinking that you know this is all possibility or reality in 2023? Yeah it's been super cool to watch everything pan out and just seeing how the game of volleyball is being developed across national stages and how big of the sport is going to be in the future so I think just being able to see how volleyball is being promoted on all these national television national websites just being streamed on multiple platforms I think it's super cool to see and obviously we're kind of ranking up in sports like the big men's sports and I think just being able for like women to see themselves on TV one day is just super cool and uh, alumni here on Sunday. How yeah. cool is that to have, uh, you know, five decades of Gopher uh, volleyball alums here and then the 2003 mm -hmm. team? It was super cool. Um, obviously, just to hear the 2003 story about how they started off the season kind of like us, like where we're at now, like 500 record, and then they ended up making a Final Four. So I think that's kind of what we're kind of like relaying our story off of. Keegan's talked about it a lot, that like they've been this in this situation before, and even Michelle talked to us about just how they changed their mindset into like the team has to do it themselves and the coaches can't do it for them. So I think just kind of hearing that story and realizing that it can happen, it's still possible. I think we're just kind of using that as our motivation. Awesome. Well, thank you, McKenna. Thank you so thank much. You.